Whew. All right. So a while back, I asked you guys on Instagram stories what headsets or headphones you'd want us to review. And I tallied up all those votes. And today I got the number one asked for headphones. And that is the Philips SHP 9500. I've been trying them out for a couple of days and I'm pretty excited to tell you exactly what I think of them and how I feel about them. I'm gonna say, first of all, that I probably won't be keeping them for very long or wearing them all that often, actually. So you'll find out why coming up. Hey guys, this is Betty from Switch and Click, and I know today we actually don't have a keyboard review at all. In fact, we have a pair of headphones, the Philips SHP 9500s to review. We bought these for about $75 off of Amazon a few weeks back, and I've been trying them out, and here we are. We've got the box right here with me, so we can jump into a what's in the box right now. All right, so I have opened these before, of course, because I've been trying them out, but I placed everything right in the box so we can discuss what exactly it comes with. So we have this really, really long cable here, and it's almost my height. This thing is 4.9 feet or 1.5 meters, and I'm only 5'1", so this thing is only a couple inches shorter than me. It's really long, it gets tangled up really easy, and you're just, it's a mess. I would really like to replace this with another one. We'll talk about the quality and everything about it later in the video, but if you wanna jump straight there, timestamps are right in that scroll bar or down below in the description box if you're interested. Alongside that, all the products and everything are also down there if you're interested in checking that out as well. So it also comes with this weird carrying case thing. I'm not really sure if this is a carrying case or if this is just something that they use to package the headphones in, sort of similar to like uh, the plastic wrap that surrounds a keyboard when you first get it, but it's not exactly high quality or anything. It's pretty rough looking material and it doesn't look very good. I wonder if I can iron it or something, make it look a little bit better. Another thing that we have, and this came attached to the cable actually, is the 3.5 millimeter to one quarter inch adapter. And this could be really useful if you're planning on connecting these headphones to an amplifier, your guitar, your piano, anything that requires this kind of jack. And of course, we have the headphones themselves. And at first glance, they look really big and I assure you, they are. And that's pretty much it for everything that's in the box. They are my first pair of open back headphones. And to be honest, I was really excited about them. I've always heard that open back headphones have this amazing sound stage and sound just wonderful. Not like you're stuck in your head or imagining the music, but you're there at the concert. We're gonna jump straight into the next section, which is design. All right, design. First impressions, I gotta say, they are really, really big pair of headphones. Even if I put them on my head, they just look absolutely ginormous, but they are surprisingly really comfortable. You have this kind of dual layered headband system going on. At the top, there's this thick plastic piece that's not super flexible, but it does have some give. At the top there, we have the Philips branding that's embossed into the plastic itself. And it's sort of shiny, so the light reflects on it quite well. And underneath that, we have a more padded piece. And while I was flexing and twisting and doing all that jazz, this plastic piece actually came off and I was like, ooh, did I break it? But it's actually meant to come off because they clip straight back in. Whew, so what a relief, right? And then alongside that, you have the left and right indicators within the headband, but then you also have them on the sides of the headphones themselves. They're very large. You can tell at an obvious glance far away if someone has their headphones on in the wrong direction. And it does have these metal headband adjusters as well. 
and it has holes that tell you what number your head size is. So obviously I'm a zero. The whole pair of headphones are black. There's white wording and then it has these silver accents as well. And the pads are quite thin. I know I'm not a huge fan of the pads. They're thin and they're sort of this meshy material that surrounds some sort of memory foam. So it's not a bad look. It actually looks pretty decent. I think I might look a little bit silly because my head is really small and it might not fit the exact way that it's supposed to. All right, so let's go on to build quality. Like I said, that pad in, in between there is meant to fall off, but I was looking online for some kind of replacement pad to maybe get a thicker one so that it would fit my head a little bit better, but I couldn't really find anything. Alongside that, I looked at how to replace the ear cups if you could, and it looks like there's a few options, but the options that I saw were more of like a no turning back, you need to cut it off kind of option. So I'm not sure how I feel about that exactly. And I did attempt to, you know, take off the ear cups, which then I soon learned after that they're glued in there. So I did that. Yep. Yep. In terms of build they're mostly plastic pretty much everything is plastic except for the the headband adjusters and then the metal vents that are perforated on the side and these really allow sound to bleed through pretty much even if you're listening at a low volume person across the room they are gonna know what you're listening to and you know that's not bad it can get really annoying though depending on if the other person is working or if they're doing something else or if they just don't want to listen to what you're listening to because I don't know, maybe they're not a big fan of country music or rap or EDM, any of those things really. They look really good and the build's really good. I did manage to drop them a few times because this cable is actually so long that when it dangles off my desk, it sometimes gets caught up in the chair or in my elbow or something like that and it didn't break. No cracks, no dents, no anything. So I'm gonna say good job to Philips for having a high quality built headphones for a pretty affordable price at $75. All right, so let's go to the cable itself. I do have a lot more complaints about the cable alongside it being really long. The plastic port here also keeps coming off in a really just not a good way. I can connect it to the headphones like this because it does have a detachable cable port, which is really convenient. And I really like that. That's a very good feature. But when I go and pull out the cable, this metal piece, this metal piece always slides off. And I don't know, it feels like it's, it's oh, well, there it goes. It's pretty much broken. Well, it, the glue just isn't really there. It's not sticking. So I have to grab the actual cable itself and then pull it out. So this isn't looking very good. Obviously I could put some glue on there and slide it back, but you know, I might as well just slide it back like that. So that's fine the way it is. So not the best cable. I really do need to replace the cable with something else, something shorter, something higher quality, maybe braided, something fancy. But the fact that it has a detachable cable port actually makes that really convenient so that you can just toss this one aside and replace it with something a little bit nicer. In terms of comfort, it is really, really loose on my head. Even at the lowest setting, there's a lot of gapping here behind the ear. There's a lot of gapping here below the ear. It just doesn't really feel right. Like it doesn't stick onto my head very well. And of course, if I'm leaning over and trying to pick something up, it does slide out of my head. So I pretty much can only use this when I'm at my computer, I'm standing very upright, I'm not leaning over, dropping things, moving around. Can't use this for working out, biking, cleaning even, vacuuming, things like that. So in that sense, I'm not the hugest fan, but I do understand that these are for listening to music and being more in a sedentary position, maybe laying on the couch, maybe sitting in a chair, sitting in a nice recliner, all relaxed, listening to music, things like that. But it is very lightweight. 
I don't feel much pressure on any spot really. I did use these for editing videos, which I think it does really well at. The voice really comes through and the background music really comes through and everything's great. And I did notice that after one and a half hours of editing, there was a spot on the top here that did provide a little bit of pressure. So the longer I wore them, the more I started noticing that they are there. But when I first put them on, they feel relatively lightweight and there's no warmth anywhere. And I live in Texas, so it's pretty warm here. But there's no warmth, but there is a lot of just extra space here and there. So I guess that makes sense. And the vents really do provide a lot of air coming through, coming out, whatever. And I can hear a lot of the things around me. People can hear what I'm listening to. So it could be good and it could be bad. The pads feel extra shallow. I'm really used to very puffy, very thick memory foam kind of pads that are either genuine leather or pleatherette or that kind of material. So this is very different. I'm not the biggest fan of them, to be honest, but it seems like changing them is probably a pain and maybe something I would mess up because I'm not the most precise kind of person. So it does have a few angles of adjustment. Of course you can flex it and twist it all around, but the ear cups have two angles that they can move. They can move side to side horizontally and then they can move up and down as well. So that is one way that you can try and find the right fit. Unfortunately for me, no matter what way I rotate it or do anything to it, it doesn't really close up on my ear very well. It could be a result of my weirdly oddly shaped head. So as far as sound goes, honestly, it's one of the best sounding pair of headphones I've ever put on. And that doesn't say much coming from that I've never really used a pair of audiophile heads headphones per se. I've really only used gaming headsets that I use for listening to music. And my main heads headset is the HyperX Cloud 2s that I've been using pretty much forever. And I love them. It's just, this sounds so much better when I listen to music. Even things like lo-fi, I can hear like those really small, subtle, ambient sounds in the background. Like the birds chirping or the train coming through and things, things like that that I just never really noticed before. So it sounds absolutely amazing. Most of the genres of music that I listen to, pop, EDM, lo-fi, maybe some instrumental, piano, things like that. It sounds really good. As far as hip hop goes, the bass is definitely a bit lacking. And I suppose you can always fix that in an equalizer or something like that. But the bass really needs help, especially the subtle bass sounds. As far as like the big bassy kinds of things, it does sit fine, but the subtle bass in the background, if you're listening to like a rock band or something, and there's that basis in the back, you don't really hear that too well at all. So I did recently get another pair of open back headphones, the Drop Hi-Fi Man HE4XX, also open back. And this leaks a lot more sound than those do. Obviously those have really thick cushions as well and have different drivers, but this still has the perforated vents and this leaks out so much more sound. It can get really annoying for someone who works right next to me, which we work right next, Jake and I work pretty much right next to each other. Our desks are very close because, well, we have a small house, so that's just how it works. And I find myself having to switch to the closed back headset a lot really often. As for my point of view, I really only listen to music when I'm working, maybe when I need to get my mind off of things, if I'm stressed or feeling anxious or things like that. So this really helps with listening to that kind of music. But as for working, I definitely prefer a closed back headset or headphones where I can really focus on what I'm doing instead of feeling distracted and hearing everything else around me as well. Honestly, I really prefer life without headphones on, but there just comes a time and a place and a certain situation where I feel like I need to enjoy the music more or listen to it better. And in those cases, yeah, I really would like a pair of headphones that fits me really well, that I just love putting on, that make me just enjoy music a lot more. So I'm still trying to find that, but we'll see when that will happen. Currently, I'm just switching between 
whatever test headphones I'm doing. And of course the HyperX Cloud 2s are still my go-to closed back pair of head headphones. I guess I use them like headphones because I ditched the mic completely. As for any extra features, this has got nothing. <laughs> it's pretty much straightforward, plug and play. You can plug it into your phone. You can plug it into your consoles, your PC, all of that jazz. Nothing fancy here. It's it's really nothing fancy. It is budget. At least I think it's budget. It's budget compared to everything else in the audiophile world, which gets really, really pricey. Now that I'm like diving into all that stuff, there is a lot of information, a lot of things to learn in that area. And as for the verdict, I mean, these are really good. They are probably half the cost as the other pair of headphones that I just got. And they sound, I think they sound better, in fact, than those pairs. And it's just, it's different. It is my first open back pair of headphones. So I guess take my opinion with a grain of salt, of course, but they sound absolutely amazing. If you listen to a lot of hip hop and a lot of EDM, maybe they're not the best pair for you. And you can definitely look at something else with a lot more bass. But in terms of just casual listening, they do fantastic. As for comfort goes, it's not for me, but I know there are people with larger, more average size heads that this could really work for. But for me, it's just not gonna work out. And the cable is not super impressive or anything. If you have your own cable, I definitely replace it with that. There's no microphone, there's no, there's no anything really. It's just simple, it's straightforward. If you want a good listening experience, it's a, it's a good buy. At $75, I mean, there's really nothing here that's life-changing or to complain about. But if you haven't tried an open back pair of headphones, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you do because that step is life-changing. In terms of purchases though, I don't regret this purchase at all. It allowed me to learn things like open back versus closed back. It allowed me to understand really what that sound stage would sound like. And it also taught me that perhaps a lot of headphones really aren't gonna fit me very well and it might be quite a journey <laughs> trying to find the right pair for me. So in that case, I welcome this journey and I think it'll be quite a fun one and maybe a disappointing one at times, but we shall see. Perhaps the headphone space is also a space where there are modifications, there's software, there's different things to do to the stock product to make them better, but I haven't learned anything about that. So maybe that'll come in the future. We shall see. Replacing the pads on this sounds like a pain though. So I'm just not gonna do it. That's pretty much the end of the video. And now it's just gonna be me talking about random stuff. Like, check it out. There is no shelf behind me. Why? Because we, we broke the shelf. It fell off the wall. And now we're using our accent. Well, this is supposed to be our accent wall. It's darker than the rest of the walls. We got soft boxes, the lighting is, I think it's superb. It really depends on what you think. Honestly, at this point, as a person on YouTube, I don't know how to say this, but it sort of just feels like no matter how many improvements we make or the things that we do to our studio, to our content, to a presentation, to our products, etc., it just seems like you guys are really never gonna be happy with that. And I think that puts a lot of pressure on me to always be improving and always be thinking of the next step. But I think that's just a lot for my wee little brain sometimes. And there is a lot of pressure. So I think I'm just gonna relax a little bit. The schedule will be the same. Everything will be the same. The content will always get better. The production quality will always get better because we're just that kind of person, that kind of people always striving to improve. But it's just a lot. I mean, it's, if you look at where we were eight months ago, like to now, it's, it's a very stark difference. And I guess maybe we all need to slow down and, you know, like maybe smell the roses a little, myself included, and just appreciate that, um, that that channel, that this channel has gone from that the kind of video that I can't really even stand to watch anymore to this, which is, in my opinion, it looks and it sounds and the editing and everything has just 
improved so tremendously. And like that takes, that kind of change takes a lot on a human, AKA myself. And I, I want this to be sustainable. I don't want, I don't know, I don't want this to be some, co some sort of anxiety causing experience for myself. So um, I'm really not sure what to say here. I know things are different, we're branching out. And if you've made it this far into the video, uh, it shows that you've really cared. So please smash that like button and you know maybe provide some encouraging words because sometimes even though I am very intrinsically motivated all the time, sometimes I think I just need a little encouragement. So, you know, I appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. And I know when you say you need to improve this, this, and this, I know it comes from a very good, kind place that you want us to succeed, that you want this channel to get better. And I understand that, but it's a lot of pressure on, uh, on one, on two people, so. We're just gonna try and do some, maybe include some more fun things, maybe like things where the audio may not be as good, things like some kind of vlog style or where the lighting may not be perfect and things like that. Anyways, I think this is getting a little bit too long. I hope you enjoyed the first ever open back headphone review that I've ever done. I hope you enjoy our branching out into this audio space because I really do enjoy audio and I enjoy music and you know, listening to videos and all that good stuff. And I enjoy learning about a different area as well. Oh, so with that said, you know, I appreciate all you guys. It's been eight and a half months now and it's been an amazing journey. I'm gonna keep going. This isn't me retiring or anything. So can't wait for a year. We'll do some recap videos at the end, all that good stuff and you know, forget this ever happened and we'll continue on with this journey, with this video schedule like normal. I appreciate you. Bye.